you can't stop talking to Denise about God, maybe you just shouldn't come around anymore, huh? Really? Yeah. journey to me. It was I who made you a free and responsible person. I gave you a conscience. To find out for yourself what is right or wrong. I am not a petty god. Not a finicky parent who inflicts rules and regulations from above. Journey to me. For I laid values and norms in your heart. And I created you for freedom. I am Wan Jun. I enjoyed my life as a student in college. You will remember my experiences as a small girl in Taipei. My visit to Longshan Temple with Granny my struggle to find out the truth about God. It was a search I continued as I grew up. My subject was marine biology. The subject fascinated me. I had a tutor called Peng Hua. For my research project, I had chosen to study some species of inland fish that are common in Taiwanese waters. My professor told me, find out why their stock was declining at the time. Peng Hua was assigned the task of supervising me. Peng Hua was a brilliant biologist who had published many articles and who was admired by all the students. I felt privileged to be close to such a famous and popular man. I was excited when he agreed to come home with me so that I could introduce him to my parents. My father took to him immediately. Peng Hua explained how an electron microscope works.
and when he met my granny, he charmed her by calling her the family's treasure house of wisdom. I often discussed my findings with Peng. He took a great interest in my work. We were becoming close friends. But when he suddenly showed me his affection, I was still taken by surprise. Later, I went a few times to Peng's flat. After hard work, it seemed natural to relax. More than once, it started with business and ended up with us making love. I knew that what I was doing was wrong. I wasn't sure if I wanted to marry Peng or not. I suppose I was just drifting along. A few months later, it was decided that Peng and I should go on an expedition to study the inland fish in their natural surroundings in Sun Moon Lake. We had to take samples of everything in the fish's world, the plants, the soil, the water, and their food. My monthly periods had stopped, and I took a personal pregnancy test. The outcome was positive and was confirmed by my doctor. He told me I was going to have a baby. The discovery made me come to my senses. I realized I'd made a mistake, and I asked God to forgive me. I knew I was responsible for the child I was carrying. My child deserved love and a father. I decided to marry Peng Hua if he would agree to have me. I would tell him of the child at an appropriate moment. Sun Moon Lake is one of the most beautiful lakes in the middle of Taiwan. In spite of its dark, murky water, it had always supported plenty of fish.
Peng Hua, I said, I am carrying your child. Please marry me before the child is born. Peng was angry. Perhaps I'll marry you later, he said. The child comes too early. Have an abortion. I will not have an abortion, I told him. It is our child. Do you want me to kill a human being? What human being? Don't be silly, he said. It's just a fetus and nobody needs to know. There are some good clinics. What do you mean nobody needs to know, I said. God will know. What? he said. You let your life be dictated by an imaginary being no one can see and who does not exist? Helan, the proprietor's daughter, welcomed us. I liked her very much. Then Peng began a long argument. God is a figment of the imagination, he said. What's worse, God is a father figure. People obey out of a sense of fear or guilt. Look at the history of our own people. Religion was used to keep us in subjection, he said. Kong Fu Zi taught our ancestors to stand in awe of the ordinances of heaven. Women's feet were bound so that they couldn't walk. Men were told how to wear their hair. Kings ruled by the authority of a mandate from heaven. They could do to their subjects what they liked. The poor were kept in submission. Stupid religious texts justified class domination and extortion. It's only by throwing off religion that we have become free, Peng told me. And the Christian God is even worse, he said. Thousands of innocent people were tortured or burnt at the stake as witches or heretics. The whole mistake lies in believing there is a God who dictates what we should do or not do. Jews and Muslims believe God forbids them to eat pork. Jehovah's Witnesses refuse blood transfusion because God has told them so. Indians are convinced God wants them to sing and dance like lunatics. I agree with Nietzsche and Sartre, Peng concluded. Even if a god did exist, we should not allow him to dictate our life to us. We have to assert our freedom as human beings and use our own intelligence. Abortion is the rational thing to do. Don't disown your own responsibility. Don't put the blame on a fictional god.
We owe these people money, she told us. Now they've taken my daughter. They'll sell her as a prostitute to a brothel in Taipei. After Peng's demand for an abortion, I thought a lot about his words. I did not agree with him. I knew I had to take an important decision. I remember the saying of Kung Fu Zi, a fish may sink and lie at the bottom of the sea. It will still be seen quite clearly in the light of heaven. Therefore a good person should examine his heart to make sure there is nothing wrong there. Peng was right in rejecting the image of God as a capricious tyrant who imposes arbitrary do's and don'ts. God is much more like the water, the air and the light which surround us and in which we move and live. If we listen to our nature, we're in harmony with heaven, Kung Fu Zi had said. I was carrying my child. It was now part of me, as much as I was part of nature. I knew I did not want to abandon my child because of some freak commandment of God, but because doing so would go against my own nature. God, being like water, air, and light around us, does not restrict our freedom. God leaves us free to make our own responsible decisions. If we were pious people, Peng said, 
we would think that heaven is angry with us. Don't the gods heap blessings on their friends and disasters on their enemies? Instead of sheltering here, we should fall on our knees and plead for mercy. You don't know anything about real religion, I told him. God is our creator. God doesn't interfere with the course of nature. God has given us our creative freedom to look after ourselves. God works on another level. Then what level does your creator God work on, he asked. God works through our conscience. Through reason we can work out what is right and wrong. Think of what happened to her, Lan, I said. We know that what the moneylenders were doing to her is wrong. But why is it wrong? If the moneylenders and people like them could do what they liked, why could they not just capture prostitutes for their own gain as fishermen capture fish? do we need to respect other people's life and freedom? Notice, it is not just a question of public justice. It simply is wrong, whether the government, the police, or any other human person knows of it or not. <laughs> the same applies to abortion. We have a duty to protect a child in the womb because we don't own it, as little as we own other human beings. Our conscience tells us that it has a right to live which we cannot take from it. By this we recognize that there exists an objective good that is not in our control but which we have to accept. Some things are good, others are evil. We cannot change that. Just as little as we can change the weather. My father insisted on an abortion. You must first complete your studies, he said. Then you should get married properly. I will pay for the best clinic. Don't force your daughter, Granny said. I will help her look after the child. One day, when I got home, I received the news that Granny had had a stroke and had been taken to hospital.
Granny died soon after that. I was very busy preparing for the final exams. A few weeks later, Peng came with the news that he had found out where Herlan was kept as a prostitute. We cannot leave her there, he said. I think I know a way of freeing her. I have worked out a plan. I had arranged for her land to stay with us for the time being, since she would need a hiding place. Thank you for saving her, Lan, I said. And don't ever tell me again you have no conscience. My daughter, my father said, and I have two special presents for her. 
The first is, I will pay for her studies in London so that she can obtain a doctoral degree there. And then my second present, he said, I have located the money lender to whom Herland's family owes a debt. Well, I have paid off the debt in full so that Herland can now return home. A few months later, my child was born. When she was old enough, I had her baptized. I called my daughter, Mary, Fu Qing.